At the last minute, we had to add the next segment. Uh, since Sarah and I were both uh, listening to music from an artist who's the opposite of that fascist pig who we heard from before. Sinead O'Connor is a beautiful artist, a courageous artist uh, who, um, you know, I had the chance to briefly meet, but she's somebody who sang at a concert that uh, we were involved in, resisting concert uh, from the organization Refuse and Resist in the early 90s. Um, and she, she stood against, she stood with the people. That's the thing that, that really struck me. She took on the Catholic Church, God damn it. She took, he took on the Catholic Church and its abuse of children before it was a big, when it was highly unpos, you know, unpopular. She ripped up a picture of the Pope on TV. She was so brave. You know, she sang at a, uh, a, a, a anniversary for Bob Dylan and the crowd was, half of the crowd was booing. And it was, she just stood there and stared at them. And then Chris Christopherson came and he put his arm around her and, he, and, and she said, I'm all right. And the band started playing the song and she told him, stop. Okay, turn this up. Until the philosophy which holds one race superior and she pulled out the artist in her ear in ear so they can hear themselves sing and she screamed she screamed in a lyrical way the song war and abandoned everywhere is war and it's for her it was a war against all forms of oppression it was really a moment in the face of a howling mob of somebody standing up to it and she had a beautiful voice. She did. And uh, I think we were both tearing up listening to some of the songs. So uh, I want to give you a chance to talk too, but I'm so moved by this. We're going to play uh, one song or part of a song soon, Black Boys on Mopeds, Little Motorcycles. And uh, we're going to, she did it on a TV show here. We're going to show you um, at the beginning of this uh, song, she tells you, uh, what we're going to do is she, she tells you why she's singing, and we'll just play the second verse, which she'll, it'll be clear from what she has to say. Um, well, I don't want to say too much more. I mean, I appreciate what you said. I, I'll just say for anybody who was alive and paying, even not paying attention, when Sinead O'Connor, uh, when she emerged on the scene, everybody remembers her silhouette with no hair, um, singing with such heart and and feeling i mean everybody remembers it and then when she ripped up that picture of the pope i think it just busted open i mean i know for me personally i was very young and it just changed like what you it was scandalous and so inspiring <laughs> it like broke something in your assumptions in society and she had a lot of courage and she paid an incredible price for always speaking her conscience and so yeah, yeah i think that's we should an important see that point i mean she was hounded it's true. Hounded. This system has no love for anybody who stands against it as implacably as she did at that time. Mm -hmm. And the music industry was treating her like trash at that point. And there were a few courageous artists who defend her. And I just want to say we're going into this rare time and we need more artists to take that kind of stand with their art and with their voice. And, and she did that. And uh, last, you know, she she uh, she did uh, suffer terribly from mental illness and, and tremendous tragedy, including recently. And uh, when she first uh, came down or with mental illness, she went public with it and shared it with the public. And uh, she took up a lot of different causes, um, some good, some not so good. But the one that was, you know, she also stood with the Irish people in their struggle. And she's did some beautiful songs uh, that you can find online with the Chieftains. But we're going to go play this uh, one uh, bit of the song, Police Who Kill Black Boys on Mopeds. So watch this and um, take a listen to uh, Sinead O'Connor and see what it 
a beautiful and heroic artist can do and read about it and see how she really changed lots of young women like yourselves, like yourself and, and all of us who were looking for uh, people who would stand up against this machine. Uh, well, I wrote this song probably about 21 years ago uh, when I was living in England and at that time in England uh, it was rather a racist society. Uh, for example, if, if, a, if a black person burgled a house and it was written about in the newspaper, it would say in bold letters, it would say black burglar. It wouldn't say just burglar, you know, as if it was an issue what the color was of the person that burgled your house, you know. Anyway, so there was a, near me, there were two young boys, maybe 14 and 13, um, who had borrowed their cousin's moped. Um, the police had assumed that they stole the moped and they uh, chased the two boys who kind of panicked and uh, smashed into uh, the side of a petrol station and ended up dead. So it's not a happy song. So It wouldn't make you want to live in England, basically. England's not the mythical land of Madame George and Roses. It's the home of police who kill black boys on mopeds. I love my boy, and that's why I'm leaving. I don't want him to be aware that there's any such thing as grief. Young mother down at Smithfield 5 a.m. looking for food for her kids In her arms she holds three gold babies And the first word that they learn was please These are dangerous days To say what you feel is to dig your own grave Remember what I told you If you were of the world, they would love you But England's not the Mythical land of Madame George and Roses It's the home of police who kill black boys on mopeds And I love 